Library. I'm Ellen Snow, I'm the Library Director. We're delighted that you came over to see us and to hear our speaker. We're, our, we're, um, one of our missions is to find speakers who are practical, who can really give our lives a boost and uh, are full of good advice in all sorts of different areas. So um, we're going to be probably doing an um, eBay um, session in the summer, um, but um, Billy was offered to serve as a so I, we're thrilled that a lot of people are interested in what he has to say. So we're delighted to invite Billy for the first time to the West Virginia Public Library, Billy Gina Lucas. You go. So. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Billy G works sometimes too, but um, um, I thank you. I just want to thank everyone for coming out today. And it's my goal today that you guys leave here today with something new to bring to your life. But since we're all here, turn to the person next to you if you don't know them. Greet them. It's going to be a good morning. It's got about two hours right now. It's going to be a great morning for every single one of us. Just say hello. Just start the day on the right foot. While you do that, I'm going to make sure this thing's working. <laughs> <laughs> Get the family here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but all right. Um, so again, thanks everyone for coming. The focus today is to help everyone in here start to realize the true personal power that we've been given, but to also take control of that and direct it towards wherever we want to go in this life. And to do that, one of the major areas that we're going to be focusing on and trying to learn about today is what I like to call the universal tool. Because it can do anything, it can create anything, and it can help us in every single situation of our life if we can take control of it and direct it towards where we want to go. Now, that being said, does anybody know what this universal tool is? And if you've been to another training, don't say it. <laughs> Does anybody want to take a guess? Close. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's something we use from this. But it's the mind. We can do anything with the mind if we can take control of it. And to do that today, we're going to be addressing six human needs psychology, which truly helps us figure out why we do what we do. We're then going to take our six human needs to identify what may be stopping us from living the life that we want to live by identifying our personal patterns that we follow throughout the day and also trying to figure out our thought patterns that we follow throughout the day. Because if you can adjust the thoughts that you choose to focus on during the day, you begin to create a dramatic shift in your life and where your life goes. Because those pieces, pieces give us the road map to our own life. And once we know that, we can start to adjust every piece there. And that's at the end of this training is why we're going to address our personal goals. Because once we have all those pieces, we know where to go. Now, next one. Here we go. So just so I'm not just a stranger up here to some of you people that don't know me, I figured I'd give you some of my backstory and why I choose to do this. My entire life, I've just been absolutely driven to help people in whatever way I possibly could. But going, growing up, I just did not know how I wanted to do it. And I'd shoot for the stars. I just wasn't sure. But, you know, the mind was just so absolutely fascinating to me. That became the route. And just like everyone's story, we've all been experiencing in our life. We all have a backstory of pain. And about three and a half, four years ago, I went through pain from every aspect of my life and it just shook the foundation of my life the first thing was my grandmother passed away from alzheimer's and to me she was truly a glue that kept everyone together and when she passed away to say that everyone was fighting is kind of an understatement but me i was always someone in our family i was the youngest so i would just see what was going on so i would observe that hurt a lot just seeing the people i cared about at each other's throats awful caused stress on me to go hand in hand with that a couple months after that, I went through a severe heartbreak, which absolutely shook everything in me, caused me to go through depression, anger, anxiety, everything you could possibly think of under the sun, and that shook me. And then to go on top of that, I was a therapeutic mentor just starting out in Brockton, Massachusetts, which isn't the best place for some families, and I was thrown into these houses to try and help these kids and help these families kind of grow out of that. And with everything going on outside of work life already being a struggle, it was tough for me. 
But with all that on your shoulders, stress at work, heartbreak, family at each other's throats, a lot of people attribute that as your heart breaking because you're going through all this pain because of the stress, whatever it may be in your own personal life. But I never really looked at it, it was your heart breaking. I looked at it as it was your mind because we link everything to certain aspects of our life. We make connections in our brain helping us feel love, to feel joy, to feel pain, to feel pleasure, to feel grace. Any emotion that you can think of is linked in your mind in some way to help you feel that. So that idea of breaking, it's your mind actually going haywire because those connections are severed and those connections are broken. And in my case, it was my mind that just absolutely ripped apart and went haywire. You can ask anyone in here that knows me, as you just saw, there's some family members in here and some good friends in here, that when I was going through that pain from every corner, it was bad and I just was not myself. Every single thought that I had went to a bad place. If I thought of my family, went to a bad place. If I thought on emotional relationship stuff, went to a bad place. If I thought on work life, went to a bad place because it was just so stressful. But truthfully, looking back now, that's where my, the grace was found because there's no doubt in my mind that the big man upstairs had a plan for me because in all that pain that happened, with my mind going completely haywire, feeling depressed, feeling anxious, feeling just anger from every corner, it truly led me to learn how this actually worked and how to take control of it and direct it towards wherever you want to go. I'm a trained strategic intervention life coach where I try to help people make the changes that they want to make. I'm a therapeutic mentor where I try to help kids get back on the right track or get on the right track. And I'm a motivational speaker where I try to bring out the best in people. And today, I want to help you bring out the best you. To take control of your mind and make the changes that you feel you need to make to live your best life. And if you're in here today, uh, support from me. <laughs> that means the world to me. But dig deeper. You're all in here today for a reason. You're in here today for an opportunity to get better in your life and to change your life. Run with it. Run with the information to help you, to help a friend, to help a family member. Because one thing that is absolutely for sure for today, whatever comes from today, all starts with every single one of you and what you choose to do here. Now, after saying all that, <laughs> why are you guys here? Why are you guys here? What are the changes that you want to make? We're all here today for a specific reason. You don't be shy to explain it because we're all going to help ourselves get better today. Does anybody want to volunteer and just give a little tidbit to why you're here? Or a change that you feel, you know what, eh, I want to focus on. Yeah. Retiring in 90 days from the post office. Good for you. Where you have been. Good for you. And so where do I go from here? I got gotcha. you. I do something very positive. Yeah. And you have the right place. <laughs> yeah. That's this awesome. Is, this is Great opportunity. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being here. Yeah. What else? One more. Can't have the my friends in the back being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Else want to say anything before I move on? Again, no is in the back. I understand. I'm gonna call on you later. <laughs> uh, did I catch it? Oh, I might have to type in the password one more time. Nah, we're good. Cool. Um, so since no one else wants to say anything, uh, but when trying to bring out the best you, there's a couple of things that we need to know first. And one major question or point that we need to figure out is why we do what we do. And to do that, we're gonna dive into six human needs psychology. Now, Six Human Needs Psychology was created by Tony Robbins, who I was trained by. But what, why I have this up here, if you guys have ever taken a psych course in high school, college, whatever it may be, this is Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When Tony Robbins was creating the Six Human Needs Psychology, he derived them from this because at our base level as humans, we're all trying to meet one of these needs right here. And Tony Robbins took that deeper into our emotional aspect and our personal aspect. So that's what we're going to be figuring out today. So... These are six human needs right here, and you guys have a sheet that labels them for you. But Tony's goal was to figure out that answer to why we do what we do. 
and he figured out that the basis of all human motivation stems from trying to meet one of these six human needs because they're connected to every single behavior, emotion, and action that we feel or do. All human motivation can be explained by the desire to meet one or more of these six primary human needs. So basically, everything that you do or feel has a reason. And in order to understand any behaviors, whether it's someone else's or our own behaviors, it's important to understand which need you're trying to meet. And being a life coach, a speaker, and a mentor, something that's been absolutely eye-opening for me is when I'm in a session with someone, when you're, we're just talking about the six human needs or someone learns about the six human needs psychology, it's an intervention in itself and it starts to give them their answers. So when you're learning about this today, keep your mind open and see what you may actually be trying to meet because we're going to dive into it for every single one of us. Because when you can answer that question of why we do what we do, when you know that, you can change the basis of what you do to create a better result because it teaches us the wiring of our minds. And once you know the wiring of your mind, why not rewire it to live your best life? So we're going to dive into every single one of these needs. I'm going to explain them for all you guys. And after every single need, I was lucky enough to get a whiteboard. So we're going to, I'm going to call on you guys to give us an example of how you think you might meet one of the, the need that we're going over. And you guys all have a sheet right now with the needs on them and a real basic definition of each need. And when we're going over these, try to fill in the blank for you, for what, how you meet that need. And at the end of this, we're going to try and figure out what our top two primary needs are. Because throughout our days, we meet all these needs on a daily basis, but we have two primary that actually create the basis of our life. So how we meet a need is known as the vehicle that we use to meet it. Now, the first need up here, certainty, it's our want for comfort, security, or a need to avoid pain. And that real basic definition and example of that, none of you would be here today if you aren't meeting your need for certainty. And how that is is because there's a roof above us. If I put this out there like, oh, come to the Westbridge Royal Library, you guys are going to love it, it's going to be awesome, there's no roof, it's going to rain that day, it's going to be windy, but, you know, it's still going to be a good time. There's a good chance that, you know, some of you might not show up. You know, one of my friends back there might. He's, you know, you know he's out there. But um, <laughs> he likes the wilderness. But, um, you know, everyone has a base level of certainty. But we all go about it differently. Some people, I do this, follow a routine, a routine every single day of the week that creates structure in their life. That structure is your certainty. It creates a comfort, security aspect of your day. My daily routine has probably been going on for a long time now. I should probably switch it up every now and again, but I get success out of it because I start my day in a specific way where the second that alarm goes off, I thank God for the day, and I declare that it's going to be a great day. And I go about my daily routine, brushing the teeth, you know, shower, do everything I do, and I go to the gym, start my day working out, and then I go to work after that. That's been my daily routine for about four years now. And the success I've had out of that and just feeling absolute joy in my life because, one, you get your spirit moving. And if you're a spiritual person, you're a believer in something, getting your spirit moving to start your day really sets the tone for your day. And then getting the physical aspect, going to the gym, sets the tone physically for your day. And then going into work and seeing everyone around you and being just open to everyone gets your emotional aspect going. But my daily routine has created a lot of structure for me. Some people receive certainty by the people they surround themselves with. You know, I know people who hang out with certain people because they know that they're more intelligent than everyone else in that group. But because they know that and they choose to hang out with those people because they, that sense of intelligence, that everything the smart one, is always there, it gives them that sense of certainty. It's always going to be there when I can go to it. Some people receive certainty through faith. And despite what may be going on in your life, they believe that they're being guided by a higher power in some way. There's so many different ways to meet your need for certainty, but the basic way is a feeling of being comfortable. Some people meet their need through a basic way, you know, like smoking. You know, at, at some people may consider it an unhealthy form, whatever it is. But since there are so many different ways, the major question is to remember is if how you're meeting that need is empowering, disempowering, or it's neutral. So that being said, it's a real brief overview. How do you guys think you meet your need of trying to be comfortable, security, or to avoid pain? How do you guys think you meet certainty? While I write this down, I hope this hands up.
Also, I don't have the best handwriting. I'm going to warn you now. <laughs> so, how do you guys meet certainty? Yeah? Um, following like, a routine, like day to day. Exactly. Do you find with your daily routine you get success out of that and other aspects of your life? Yes. Yep. You get everything done? Can't promise I have the right spelling either, so no. <laughs> what else? What else you guys got? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. That's perfect. That no, exactly. That touches on what we're about to dive into. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What else? We'll do one more, then we'll move to the next stage. Hey, tell everyone's thinking. I can see your eyes moving. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're always there for you. Perfect. That's going to come into play in one of the other needs. So keep thinking on that. And when you're diving into your own sheet, which we're going to have time to after we address every single need, but think on these. They're going to come into play. And they're, they could give you a different answer that you never thought about. But since we talk so much about certainty, let me ask you guys this. What happens if we have too much certainty? Cindy here just kind of touched on it a little bit. What happens if we have too much certainty? Hmm? No, not the one I'm looking for. Stuck? Okay. Yeah? Hmm? Stagnant? Yeah? What did you, you say before stagnant? Bored. bored. Exactly. We get bored. If we know everything, if we know every single thing down to a T, over time, just naturally, we get bored. Absolute certainty is detrimental to us in the long run. It's like we need something else. i got to fix this. <laughs> It's like we need something else. And luckily, we were given a second need in this world, and it's a need for variety, or it's a need for uncertainty. It's a change in our state of some way. Let me get this up there. There. Chase, I'm going to give you a sign every couple of minutes to just move the mouth. Um, so a need for variety, or it's a need for uncertainty. It's a need for that surprise or a need for adventure in your life. And I truly, truly believe that surprises are a must in our lives. If we know everything down to a T, we get bored. But surprises, variety, uncertainty, they make us grow. And something cool that I always try to put out there because it's cool to remember, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to how much uncertainty you can comfortably live with. It's a mix between certainty and variety, just like Cindy just mentioned. But that need for uncertainty variety, like I said, it's a change in our state, and it can be met by a positive, a neutral, or at times destructive actions. And a positive form of this need that I think we need more of is humor. That saying of laughter being the best medicine, that holds more merit than we truly give it. Because when you can laugh, it changes your state. It makes you happier. You attract positivity to you. And when you can laugh at life's problems, they don't stay problems for much longer <laughs> because your laughter takes that stress away and you can see the route to the answer just a little bit clearer. You know, I love the friends that I surround myself with because they can always make me laugh. Whether they say something or I just take a look at them, it's hilarious. But, like, if you turn around right now. <laughs> That's why one of them has a hat on right now, just make sure no one laughs. But, <laughs> but that's a positive form, laughter. Eh, a negative form, I don't want to call it a negative form, but a f form that may not be the best choice is we see variety in drugs. And I'm not talking with, like, the doctors, they give you drugs. Some people choose to do different drugs that some of us, you know, we don't look, look the best on. But they change your state, and that's why people go to it. For the time being, it's the result they choose, but it may not be the best because of the effect it has later on. We see variety with movies. When you go see a movie in theaters, it gives you that sense of something new. You're excited about it. But then again, movies can also give us that sense of certainty because how many of us have rewatched a show on Netflix or seen a movie about 100 times? Because mm -hmm. I know I have. You know, I have it. I meet my need for certainty that way. I can tell you every single line to every single Rocky ever. <laughs> and, um, 
I'm not even lying. One of my friends back there can tell you that last week I quoted Rocky before we did squats in the gym. Every word. <laughs> but it's always there. That feeling to go watch it and get pumped up for the gym for me is always there. And if you ever see me in the gym doing cardio, one, I know you're going to question why I'm doing cardio, but I have Rocky playing. <laughs> At one of the other trainings, there was a guy actually in here, and um, he's been next to me on the treadmill when I'm running or sprinting. And when I said that, he started laughing hysterically because he heard me quoting Rocky to myself while I'm sprinting on the treadmill. <laughs> but it gets me that way. It helps me keep moving. <laughs> but variety or uncertainty, they go hand in hand with each other. And they play off each other to help us grow. So that being said, how do you think you guys meet variety in some way in your life? What do you guys think? Yeah? Trying something new. Trying something new? Exactly, right? It's kind of like if we get stuck too much in our routine or structure, we need something new to help us break out of it. That's why I kept saying it helps us grow. We always get stronger when we try something new, no matter what it is, even if you don't like it. Yeah. What else? Travel? Travel? Exactly. Seeing new things. Awesome. The weather, our body needs it just as much. Here in New England, we don't get too much sun. Like, now. <laughs> what else? One more. Yeah. Yeah, so get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, right? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Which proves it was a good choice. <laughs> should I write that or should I write applause? <laughs> right? I'm going to write applause. Everyone give them a round of applause. <laughs> Anyone else before I go to the next need? No? Okay. So the third need, significance. It's our need to feel important, to feel special and unique in our own way, or to feel needed, to feel like you have a purpose for your life and that your life has meaning. And just like the first few needs, we all go about this in different ways. You know, some people meet their need of feeling importance, not in the best way, but by tearing others down. I, ha I need to have that power or feel strong, and tearing others down gives you that. They feel the need to exert their dominance on someone else to reassure themselves and at times, we see this in relationships. Whether it's a friend relationship or a significant other relationship, one person thinks that the other is better in some way, so they try to tear the other down to feel better about themselves. We're human. It does happen. But when you can choose a different response in tearing someone else down, when you try to figure out what you could do to meet their needs in some way instead, then you're on a brink of a breakthrough in that relationship. And another way to meet this need I do this. Some people work as hard as they can while others go to sleep or while others go on their lunch break and work through their lunch break because you feel like you're getting ahead. I've been doing that like, as much as I can, and I've taken a break now, but when I started learning this stuff and everything and it, just, it sparked something in me, I couldn't stop. I just wanted to get ahead. It created results, but everyone moves at their own pace. I guess, and like, I purposely cut down the hours of sleep because that extra time to read or learn could make the difference in reaching a new level, getting ahead in some way, or if I'm reading, I could learn something that could help the next person I meet. I'm always trying to move ahead in some way because I feel like I'm getting ahead. But it all depends on what works for you. I look at this in a positive way. When others look at sacrificing sleep, it's basically the end of the world. <laughs> I know we need sleep and rest is an absolute must in life, but an extra hour dedicated to the pursuit of something more every now and again, gets you to something more every now and again. An example of significance in a negative way is something that we see on the news every single day. I can't watch the news anymore because of it because there's so much there, but violence. With all the terrible stories that we see every day, a lot of them stem from the offender trying to be more powerful over another. And if a weapon is involved in those stories, who is the most significant person in the room? person with a weapon. 
They're more significant. They have the power over another. People respond to them. It's a negative form, but we see it every day that people meet it in this way. They may not know they're meeting it when we're watching the news channel, but that's what they're doing. How we meet our needs could be empowering to us, it could be neutral, or it could be disempowering. But we need to remember that it affects everyone else around us. And I touched on this earlier with relationships, but if you can understand your significant other's needs, you have a leg up on making that relationship absolutely incredible. If you both know each other's needs and can do what you can to meet them for that person, game over. That's a relationship that doesn't end because you're constantly trying to improve that or help them in some way or be there for them in whatever way they need. That's why with our need sheets that we're going to address in a second after the next couple needs, that's your needs. And if you give that to your significant other and you have their needs, you learn what their top ones are to try and build off of that with them. And you can meet them in a specific way. But we'll get to that in a second. But neutral ways to meet this need, it's pretty basic. But people can meet significance by the way they dress, buying certain things like a fancy car or having more money than others. You know, everyone goes out, they get a fancy dress, they feel good in it, they feel special, they feel unique. Um, you know, a couple guys back there, they have a fancy car. Not now. Let's see here. I think I caught it. Yeah, I did catch it. Um, but, you know, feel significance in that way, how we dress or whatever, how we look. And... More important than a neutral way, I feel, two ways to meet the need is you have a risky decision and you got to face your fear. It gives you that sense of something's about to happen. You feel there's a purpose right now. Or if you have a really big problem, you feel more significance. And it's sad to see, but a lot of people have this. They have a significant problem. And many people choose to meet their need this way. Because, one, if you're telling everyone that you have this significant problem, you, you're telling everyone that you meet, you get all the attention from everyone. Because naturally, as humans, we want to help each other. So everyone's already giving you the attention that you crave. But since you're already getting it, it tends to stop people from actually putting the work on how to fix it because they're already getting the attention that they wanted rather than bettering themselves. With working in Brockton and helping kids out, teenagers, I see this happen tremendously. If a kid comes to me with negativity, depression, whatever it is, and I, we work on it, we give them the answer, they can get to a point where they're about to do something about it, and they choose not to because everyone else in the home or their friends is just like, it, it gives them their attention already. But when you can pass that, that risky decision to face your fear, you're on the brink of a breakthrough in your life. It's absolutely incredible. But there's positive, neutral, and negative ways to meet every need. But we need to adapt it to ourselves to ha see how we meet them. And just like the first couple... How do you guys meet significance in your life? Have an eraser. Cool. Who's going to hang up? How do you guys feel unique or special in some way? And a job? Yeah. yeah, a job. Okay, perfect. What else? Huh. Yeah, you had your address. <laughs> I teach in my youth class. Okay, teaching, helping people. Yeah. Now, what gives you the significance? You being the one that they come to to ask for help, or you just giving more to someone else? I feel significant by helping someone. Helping someone, exactly. Perfect. One more. Yeah? I'm a nurturer, so I give anything. Mm -hmm. family, yeah, exactly. That's perfect. I think that's how you spell nurturer. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear from the back because I picked on you guys. I feel bad. So now you get to talk. <laughs> how do you guys meet significance? All three of you have incredible cars, and you're going to tell me you can't think of one way how you meet significance. <laughs> <laughs> Real quietly. <laughs> Just came here for support. Didn't want to talk at all. <laughs> Anyone else back there? Are you going to let MJ do all the work? <laughs> all right. 
So on to the next need. Our fourth need <laughs> puts his head down. <laughs> Um, our fourth need is our need for connection or love. How you feel connected to others, whether that's telling someone you love them or spending time with someone, or we can meet our need for connection through music. Some people meet it through prayer. We can all, or, you know, I love this one. We can meet our need for connection or love through a pet. I've got an 80 pound bulldog at the house. He eats everything, including food and everything else. And, um, but <laughs> when you go around that dog, you feel love and you feel connection. <laughs> But we can meet this need through walking in the woods. Some of us love nature, being in touch with nature. Others can meet it through an object. How many people in here, when they were younger, had a blankie or a teddy bear of some sort, whatever it is? Okay, now you raise your hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true. That, <laughs> that, that need's been there since we were a kid. When I was a kid, I had a blankie, and I carried that thing everywhere. And it was funny because at the last train, my brother actually sat in, and I mentioned to everyone how... I got that blankie the day I came home from the hospital as a baby, and I would not stop crying. And I'm wondering if he gave it to me because he loved me or just to shut me up. <laughs> but that's something we'll talk about at Thanksgiving with him. But, <laughs> but I carried that thing around everywhere because, like, whether it was my family or it was just there, like, that need for connection was there. And it's been in our mind for forever. So even when we were a kid, that's why when I go help, help go to Brockton to help kids with mentoring, I can use this stuff to help everyone because we all meet our needs. When we get older, we change how we meet our needs, but it's been there since we were a baby. And just for your own information, that blankie, the 80-pound bulldog that I mentioned to you, he got a hold of that when I went to college. And we didn't know where it went for about two years. And when it's a thunderstorm, he hides in the closet because he's terrified. And he gets stuck, but like he hides in there. And we found that blankie lodged into where his head goes. And so it's like, that bulldog's awesome. <laughs> that blankie passed down from my brother to me to my bulldog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a key factor about this need, or just a fact in general, is that most people settle for connection because love is scary. And if you look at it from a relationship standpoint, when you give your love to someone and they give it back or they hurt you in some way, it stops some of us from feeling that love or put, giving that love as much as we can again because you don't want it to be given back. So, so that's why you see some people set up a connection or relationship rather than like that loving aspect. That was real quickly over love and connection, but basically, how do you guys meet love and connection? Does anyone else have a bulldog? <laughs> <laughs> Cat? Yeah, perfect, exactly. The animal's always there for you. <laughs> what else? Faith. Faith, exactly. Yep, perfect. What else? What did you say back there? Friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, was that so bad to talk? <laughs> 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 what else? I'll do one more. <laughs> Family? Exactly. Yep. People you surround yourself with. Perfect. Make sure this doesn't go away. Okay. Now, those are the first four needs, and they're known as the fundamental needs. But to truly feel fulfilled, you need the next two. And the fifth and sixth needs are known as the needs of the spirit or the needs to achieve true happiness. And it's to grow and contribute. Now, with growth, I always like to ask everyone, what happens if you stop growing? What is it? Yeah. Exactly. If you stop growing, you die. You're constantly growing from the second you come out of the womb to when you pass away in some way. But simple and straightforward, you die. If you stop growing, you die. We all have a need to grow to learn, to improve ourselves, and to grow in life. We need to learn or we need to explore to understand the world. The people who stop meeting this need to grow in life, they, in a way, both mentally and physically, stay where they are. They become stagnant, like you guys mentioned way back in certainty, until they need to break out of that and do something to shift their state, just like with variety. But if they aren't growing and meeting that need in some way, that feeling may always come back. We always need to keep learning in life. And you're meeting this need for growth by being here today. 
because you're all learning something new that could help you. And if you take it with you, it's going to continue to help you grow. But remember what I said with certainty. Too much of it could be bad. It creates a comfort zone. And a comfort zone is great for a certain amount of time, and then it becomes boring, it becomes mundane, just like we said. How do you break out of it? You grow out of it. You need to grow in this life. Just because the age number goes up every year doesn't mean that you're growing in your mind, in your heart, or in your soul. We need to grow in all aspects. Now, I always put it out there because this is something I, I, I believe, and I've done this worksheet that you guys have now numerous times. Growth is always at the top of my list as one of the top two that I meet because think about what you could accomplish if you pursue growth. If you challenge yourself in some area to grow, a challenge in my eyes is one of the best ways to meet this need. That's why goal setting is a big part of this seminar that we're going to get to because a goal helps us strive for something and causes us to grow. And when we're doing this worksheet and after this next need, if growth isn't one of your top ones, think about what would happen or what doors would open if you started to grow in some area. Whether that's like teaching knitting and teaching people for the first time, and like you guys mentioned, trying something new, you'll get the applause from it, and people in here will applause for you. But <laughs> think about it. It's going to open a door for you. But that last need, contribution, it's our need to contribute to something more than ourselves, which can come in so many forms. But most of us, and I hope everyone in here is like this, is like this, likes to help others. We want to contribute to someone else's life. We're meeting this need by helping people, by being there for them, and by giving to others. With our need for love that we just touched on, you guys mentioned your friends, your family, being there, helping people. How many people in here have given to someone else and it felt great? And in even some cases, you felt as if peace just came over you. Contribution is one of my top needs. And growth and contribution, I think, are my two top, and they have been my two top for a while now. The example I love to use of contribution, I've used it the past couple seminars. One time in Brockton, it was two summers ago, I was driving down the street, and there was a homeless man on the side of the street. A lot of people, they don't give to the homeless anymore because they wonder if it's their job or whatever it is. I've never been like that. I think they need to, no matter who the person is, I think they need more what I have. Maybe it's a snack or money, whatever it is. They need it more than I do. So I'm going to give, and why not? What happened to me one day is there was, and in Brockton, there's a highway next to the mall. I'm sitting there. There's a man on the side of the streets. His leg was all damaged and everything. And I pulled up next to him, and I got the red light. And I rolled my window down. I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm like, I didn't have any cash on me. I didn't have snacks. The first time, I don't pack snacks in my truck for this specific reason. And I'm like, hey, man, I don't have any money. I'm so sorry. And he's like, oh, it's a thought that counts, man. No worries. And that was that. He walked to the next car. And I felt it in me that awful because <laughs> I want to give and help people. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm pulling around the corner, and I see a Bank of America hut. I'm like, yep. So I went in there and grabbed the $20 bill as fast as I can, and I drove back around, and I'm holding this $20 bill out the window as I'm getting the red light. I knew I was going to get the red light. It was just meant to be. <laughs> and I give this guy a $20 bill, and he burst into tears. And it, you could see the effect it had on this man in such an incredible way. And he thanked me. He said, God bless you and everything. I said, no, God, God's got you. Drove off. I went back to that Bank of America cut that's right around the corner, the feeling of peace that came over me in that one moment because you went the extra mile to give to someone else, to help someone else, I will tell you straight up, I bawled my eyes out and I uncontrollably, not because I wanted to, I love to help people. It was just there <laughs> as if to say, hey, you did good. Contribution is wired into our beings. It's there. And the more you can give to others is when you start to see your life improve. Giving is wired into us. No, not now. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And now, like I said, with the last two needs about our how to achieve true happiness is because growing, it gets you out of your comfort zone and helps you drive forward and reach new levels and find more about yourself in whatever way it is. And contribution is giving to something more than yourself. This training brings these six human needs to your attention because we all do this. Every human behavior or action is trying to meet at least one of these needs. But how you personally meet that need is the question for you. There are certain beliefs that we have or certain actions that we take that may not meet a need in a great way, but it meets it to some extent, so we keep doing it. 
We have a reason for every single thing that we do. So, for example, I mentioned it earlier with variety, but if you smoke cigarettes, it may not be the healthiest from what we've learned, but you keep doing it because it meets some of your needs in some way. It could be significance because growing up you looked up to someone in your family or on TV and they smoked and you thought it was cool. could be that. It could be certainty of variety because in most cases we're stressed out. It just happens and that's always there. But if you take smoking out of the situation, you're still going to have to meet that need or that urge to do something because that need needs to be met. Now all that being said, there's no right or wrong way to meet a need. It depends on your beliefs you have about how to meet that need. Everyone is different. That's what makes us all individual in this world. And truthfully, that's the best thing about this world, in my opinion, is the fact that we're all different. Because since we're all different, the wiring of our minds are all different. And why we do what we do is all different. Diving in to the six human needs helps us start to figure out why we do what we do, why we're motivated to do what we do, even if it's unconsciously. So... You guys all have the worksheet right now. It's a sec I think it's the second one from what you guys have. Take about five minutes right now and try to figure out how you meet that need in some way, whatever it is, and label out what the top two are and go down from list of priority. So take a few minutes. And this, as, the, as the seminar moves on, the training moves on. But let me hear from you guys. What are some of your top primary needs? Whoever wants to connect with it. So what are your top two primary needs? The most important to you? You mentioned sweat for small stuff. Okay. Now which ones did you write? What ones do those meet for you? Don't sweat the small stuff. Which ones do those meet? What needs? What needs? Yeah. The fact that I need to move stove, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the stove is a small size, and yeah. so I'm getting a bigger, bigger stove, uh, and I'm worried that it's not going to fit because the refrigerator okay. is right there. <laughs> You know, and the, the kids are saying, you know, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. But stuff like that. So like the little stressors in life? Yeah. 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 So do you like variety or is variety like least on your list? If you don't want Probably the... Probably the least. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So if you could pick any of these needs right now, what do you love to do? What certainty, your need for comfort, variety, obviously on the bottom of your list. Significance, you like to feel important. Yeah. Love and connection, having you know family around you. Yeah, okay. I'm just fine with that. So would you say that love and connection is your top need? Yeah. Your top need, so yeah. you meet that every day? I, no, I don't need it. Well, I'm it's like, it. it's exactly. So no matter what, you're always meeting yeah. that. Exactly. And like you just said, you meet it because you always have your family around you. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. We'll make sure we, don't, we help you with the soap. <laughs> 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 Who else? Who wants to give an example of what their top needs are? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So with how? <laughs> so with growth, how do you want to meet that need? I want to try different things. Perfect. Yeah. Where are you moving to? Florida. Oh, you're gonna try everything. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a great area. <laughs> You're going to see the sun. Exactly. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> what else? Who else back there? Chase? Um, I had certainty for my top need. Perfect. I'm going to meet that through like routine and like yeah. the day to day stuff. There you go. What's your second need? Um, love and connection. Perfect. Get your family and everyone always around you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Go. Does anybody have a need that they want to meet in a different way? And what that's in a way that's constantly helping you move forward and make that the best it can be. Yeah? Growth. growth. You want to move in growth? Yeah. yeah. Going back to school. Perfect. That's awesome. Look at you. If you're about to retire in a couple of days, you can go right back to school. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to wait until it's next September. Okay. I understand. <laughs> exactly. There you go. No, it's perfect. What are you going to study in school? Counseling. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. You're definitely going to grow with that. One more before we move on. Who wants to give an example? Yeah. Good. That's awesome. That's perfect. That shows how you've grown since the last one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, growth. 
Yeah. Is growth your top one, or is, like you said, significance is? No, significance was. Yeah. So, I mean, and now it's my least. Yeah. But I guess that I have it, so. There you go. <laughs> so, hey, it's, it's been two months since the last <laughs> seminar, so. Yeah. But now I need growth, but. Yeah. So, yeah, doing the, doing an hour or even five minutes different a day. Yeah. It's helping me grow. Perfect. Little by little. Yeah. <laughs> and I read some things I should have read, and that's, that's not me. Because uh-huh. it was a nice rainy day, I could have stayed home and read. And yeah. <laughs> but but I, I, I was so excited to get up and read. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you got up and got moved. That's, that's how many grow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, I love that. That's perfect. And those of you, I'm going to give a shout out. Cindy has written a song that's just absolutely incredible, and you're going to be hearing it soon uh-huh. in the world. I'm telling you right now, this is a song that's going to help a lot of people out. So remember the, remember her, and you're going to see her her name out there. I'm not going to lie. When she wants to pursue growth, she's doing incredible, incredible. Cindy is one of my life coaching clients, and she's made tremendous growth in the last four to five weeks. It's absolutely incredible, the work that she's been able to accomplish with us. It's perfect. But figuring out this information gives us the roadmap to why we do what we do. And if each of us can take control of that individual power to run your mind in the pattern that you follow to how you meet your needs and create a more positive way to do it if need be, that's a breakthrough just waiting to happen for you. And that's growth waiting to happen in your life, which, as we just touched on, is one of your needs. But we're going to continue to touch on the 60 human needs psychology because it's such a big piece to our life. And these right here are known as the three practical questions of human needs psychology. And to tell you straight up, these questions are not the normal ones that you're going to hear in a normal conversation of the day. It's not how your day is going. It's very bigger, but it's meant to be bigger. It's meant to help you think on a deeper level in your life. And if you can answer these questions, you start to truly identify the personal patterns and barriers that might be there in your life. And like I said, these are big questions meant to make you think on a deeper level. If you want to write them down, you can. And if you write them down and you constantly come back to them on a daily basis and question yourself with these big ones, you're going to come to new answers that could help you break through walls and make progress in your life. Because truthfully, everything comes down to the questions that you ask yourself, the results that you get, or the results that you feel. And when you actually think about it, everything in life is a question. Every thought that you have is actually a question you're asking yourself about something. And if you're someone who prays, we touched on faith being how we meet connection and love. If you're someone who prays, at times, your prayer is a question. You're talking to God and you're asking him to help you or help someone in some way and whatever it may be. We want answers. It's wired into our beings to look for it in life. But sometimes I notice that if we aren't asking the right questions, sometimes to make a shift that is best for you, we tend to get so caught up in the big changes that we have to make When in actuality, it's something so minuscule and small that if we just tweak it, we get a little bit ahead that we didn't see at first. But if you change the way you look at it or the way that you think about it, a.k.a. ask yourself a different question, you get a better answer. These are big questions that are meant to show you how deep a question can take you because you're here in this room today to find something new. And to find something new, you got to go deeper in here and you got to go deeper in here. I'll let you finish writing these questions before we move on. But that goes for anything. Whether it's these deep questions that are up here that are you don't hear every day, or it's asking yourself, if you're stuck in a situation or a problem, something at work, your family, whatever it is, how you're going about your response to those problems, if you tweak it, could make the shift in everything. Whether that's choosing to not respond to anger when someone upsets you or stresses you out, and you choose to respond with love, whatever it is. We stay calm in a situation, we tend to come to our answer a little bit more. Did you go? Yeah? Okay. Perfect. No, no, no. I'm glad you wrote them down. Okay. Now, this next part, if you guys were at the Mansfield training, this was added to that training, and truthfully, in my eyes, I feel that this is something new, and it's probably, in my opinion, the best part of the training. I love this aspect, and I think it truly helps us figure out how our mind works. And you can write this part down if you want to, or if something comes to you during this time, I want you to write it down. 
But I want your main focus to be right now is just to think. If you can block everything else out that may be grabbing for your attention, whether that's what you're doing after this, where you're going to lunch, or what happened at work the other day, whatever it is, just block it out. Put it on hold and just be here. Because like I said, this is probably one of, if not the most important pieces to the seminar. And it could honestly be one of the most important pieces to your life moving forward. Because the rewiring process helps you take control of where your life goes. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this seminar, we all have been given the universal tool that can do anything, create anything, and can help us in every single situation of our life. That being the mind. This is the true personal power we all have. But where we choose to direct our mind is what could make or break us. If we choose to direct our minds to a negative thought or the negatives of this world, we could get stuck in a negative thought pattern that could affect every other area of our life. Because our thoughts create our words, which create our actions. And when that cycle continues is what creates the life that we have, for better or for worse. We need to choose differently. And to choose differently, we need to cut that cycle off at the source, meaning our thoughts. We can't choose to focus on the negative thought or the negativity that just transpired for too long because it will affect every other area. We need to choose to think on the positives. We need to choose to think on the blessings. And we need to choose to think on the true joy of our life. And when you do that, and when you can change where you direct your mind, when your mind is saturated with what good is in your life, that is when your life begins to change. When you focus on the better, your life gets better. And I'm not saying to disregard the negativity that's in the world. I'm not saying to act like it just doesn't happen or everything's a rainbow. No. There's negativity in the world. Negativity does come to us, and it's a fact of life. And if you want to take it even deeper than that, we're told in the Bible that this is a fallen world. And you turn the news on for five minutes, you see it. It's a true statement. But the struggle has become, for each and every single one of us, that the negativity in the world has just become the norm. You could see on the news that a car accident just happened and there were tremendous injuries, whatever it is. We hear it, we listen, and we go on about our day, and they move on to the next story, the next tragedy that happened. Not bad an eye. It's the norm. Why not change that? Why not change your focus from the negativity from the problem or from the question and focus on the answer? To send a different way of thinking through your mind instead of what the world pours into it. And again, it's okay to think negative. Like I said, negativity happens in life. Emotions come to us. We feel pain. We feel sorrow. We feel anger. Negativity is going to pop into your head. But you don't have to stay there longer than you should. You don't have to live with that negativity. You don't have to live with every single day thinking on the thoughts that hold you down. You don't have to live with focusing on the worst that could happen when it takes the same amount of mental power to think on the best that could happen. <laughs> And when you can think on the best that could happen, you begin to move closer to the best that could happen. <laughs> because your life gets better the more you make your mind better. We're all here to learn something new because you're trying to make your life better. It's a choice that we all have, and we need to choose it daily. And like we mentioned with daily routines, start your day with the positive thoughts. Fill your mind with them. Like I mentioned to you in my faith aspect, I start my day. For the past three and a half to four years, the first thing that I do is thank God for the day. I declare that over the day, that it's going to be a great day. And the best part of that, and I truthfully mean that, is that it flips my mind to look for the greatness in every single day. To look for the blessings, to look for the joy, to look for the gifts that are set up along the way. And truthfully, every single day for the past three and a half to four years, I have found something to say that that day was a great day. <laughs> the rewiring process is a matter of retraining your mind to think differently, to see the positives in everything, even the struggles. Because the more we think on the positives, the more the positives come to us, the more the blessings come to us. And the incredible part of that is that the positive rubs off just as much as the negatives do. It is our choice what we choose to spread to others. And I want you all to grasp this. Every single day, we're at a fork in the road. And it is our choice to draw a line 
on the negative and to choose to look for something better, to choose to walk a different way. And one of my favorite messages to tell people in all these seminars is you don't live your reality, you live your perspective. If you keep your head down and are only focusing on what is bringing you down, your life goes down. You shift that, get ready. (laughs) Because that's a life change that's waiting to happen. It's your mind. Take responsibility for where you choose to direct it. And with everyone in here, everyone is living their own life with their own story, with their own gifts, and with their own struggles. And I hope so far in the seminar there's been something that has struck you and can help you in those struggles. But your struggles turn to strength real fast when you can change your mind on them. The rewiring process takes time, but it can be done. As a life coach, helping people speed this up to make shifts in their life is just absolutely incredible to witness. But take a step for yourself and dive into here because it could be the best thing you've ever done in your life. And after all that, a lot of people ask me the question of, all right, well, how? You can tell me to just choose differently, but it gets tough at times. There's always something coming. And telling someone to choose differently is great to say, but without the science or the power behind it, it's tough to move in that. So now, I want to get the momentum moving for everyone, and to make it easier, grasp what's resulting in the process, and to make the process easier for you, we're going to dive into the rewiring process. And I think this goes hand in hand with six human needs psychology, and I think this is just so powerful. Because how we rewire our minds is what allows us to create a breakthrough in our life. Instead of letting this life wire how you go about your days and letting this world tell you how your life is supposed to be, you take back control of that. And where that starts, like we mentioned earlier, is in our thoughts. Now, if throughout this entire training it hasn't struck yet, understand that your thoughts hold tremendous power. (laughs) Where your mind goes, energy flows. And to go hand-in-hand with your thoughts, your emotions come into play, meaning how you feel. And how we think or feel creates our state of being, for better or for worse. Because our emotions, when you break that all down, is just energy in motion. Like I said, where your mind goes, energy flows. And all energy, broken down even more, is frequency. All energy is frequency, and all frequency carries information. It's again, real science <laughs> And based on our personal thoughts and our own feelings, we're constantly sending and receiving information from ourselves and from our environment, the people we're around, and how we think on something. And what that helps us create are the patterns that we follow throughout the day. And when our thought patterns become the same consistently, we're sending the same information to our physical body to follow the same pattern. So not only are our thoughts following a pattern, but our bodies end up following the same exact pattern to wherever that leads. Because the mind leads the body. The body does not lead the mind. So that being said, with how much our thoughts and our mind are so powerful, if your mind goes to a bad place, if we constantly think on the stresses, we constantly think on the pain, and we're constantly fixated on just the negatives of this world, there is direct evidence that that affects our genes, which affects our bodies, which affects our health. It's absolutely astounding. And it's known as the study of epigenetics. And there's a doctor in neuropsychology that I've learned from who's traveling the world right now to teach this to people because it has drastically changed people's lives in record time. It's known as Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's got tremendous books out there. And he has discovered that with the correct thoughts directed towards the specific outcome that you want, you shift everything in your life. People with sickness and ill health, thinking directly on their genes, healing and then shifting their body in a specific way, has healed them back to incredible health in record time. It's absolutely incredible. And this entire process starts, like we said, with your thoughts. Your state of being is directly related to how you think or feel, your thoughts and your emotions. So you change your thoughts, you change how you feel. You change how you feel, your life drastically changes. 
And depending on where you direct that change, if you direct it towards something better, which is why we're all here, you begin to move toward a better life. It's astounding. You hold so much power to change your life with a thought. <laughs> and compiling those thoughts in the right direction over time creates a more powerful you. And compiling those thoughts in the right direction over time extinguishes the effects of depression. It extinguishes the effects of anxiety. And if directed in the right area, has been proven to extinguish ill health. All that has been given to you and is at your fingertips on a daily basis. We just need to learn about it and move in that. And that's where your control comes in because you make the choice to move in that or not. I think it's at least worth a look and it's worth a try. Your life could only change for the better. So why not? Well, this next part, and we'll have questions after this next part because this goes hand in hand with it. Let me just make sure it stays on the string. On the massive topic of why we're here, whether for you that's to learn something new or you're someone who truly wants to better your life and today is your day one, one experience could change everything for you. Our entire life is made up of experiences both good and bad. And we personally define our lives from what those experiences mean for us. There are people in here who have had something just absolutely incredible happen to them and their life has never been the same since. For some, that's becoming a parent. To hold their child in their arms changed their life entirely. The love in that moment is just so pure. For some in here, Accomplishing a goal that you've strived for. You poured your blood, you poured your sweat, you poured your tears into your work, and it paid off. You earn the experience of holding your head high. Whether that's graduating school, getting a job, starting a business, a goal in the gym, your life changed after that experience. For some in here, a spiritual experience has changed your life. From whatever walk you come from and whatever you believe, an experience with God will change your life forever. And I can tell you that from personal experience that my life has changed forever after that experience. One experience could change everything for you. But after studying all this, after learning all this, after diving into all these books and everything, I believe that we have the power to choose when those experiences happen for us, if we want to. For instance, today is a new experience for all of you. You're learning something new. Even if you're, you went to the other seminars, you're still learning something new about yourself. It's something that unlocks power in you. And it's your choice today to take this information and better your life with it on a daily basis or to leave it in this room and continue on the same day-to-day -day routine. There's power behind one experience and there's evidence behind it. Because we've all had positive experiences in life, but we all have negative experiences that define us as well like a trauma, a tough experience that we lived through truthfully left its mark. And not too many people like to face their trauma, but the more you run from that negative experience, the more it controls you in some way. Because how our minds actually work is that that one experience leaves a dark spot on our minds. And our nervous system sends messages constantly through our bodies. That's why I mentioned earlier with information and frequency in our genes. So that dark spot if we turn from it, it's still getting a message sent through it. And the result is us living in a state of fear or a state of survival. This touches on what I said with genes. Because if we're stuck in a state of survival, which is stressful, if your mind and body get stuck in a state of survival for too long, that stress carries over to our genes, causing them to deteriorate, which means us getting sick because of that one experience negative one. Everything about us goes into whack. That's one experience. But we define our experiences and what they mean to us. A positive experience or a new experience could change your life forever. And truthfully, the way of the world, the truth is that there is evidence in the world that clearly states we're not what we've been told in the past and we're even more than what we've been allowed ourselves to imagine. We're not what we've been told in the past, and we're even more than what we've been allowed to imagine. So the science behind this is that once we have a direct experience of greater potential, 
one positive experience. It frees us in our minds to believe and embrace that potential in our everyday lives. And the example I like to use for everyone, not, not a mental matter or spiritual matter, but a physical matter. The four-minute mile, something talked about with so many people in the world. I can't run for a four-minute mile. That's absolutely incredible. I can't run a 10-minute mile. But before the 1950s, that was absolutely unheard of, four-minute mile. But in 1954, Roger Bannister said, I'm going to do it. And he did it. What seemed impossible to everyone was accomplished. And what happened after that? Exactly. Everyone started to run four minute miles. When I was in high school, we had a, a kid younger than me. I was a senior. I think he was a sophomore. Ran like a four minute mile. I was astounded. I watched it. I was like, how's he done? I was a shot putter. I don't run. <laughs> but one experience, seeing that happen in history, changed everyone else's ability and belief in themselves in an instant. The struggle that comes with worldly thinking, though, is that when we're younger, we're told to embrace thinking, the thinking of our families, our friends, and how society tells us to think. Which, truthfully, when you break it all down, is in terms of limitations and boundaries. We're told about the rules. We're told about the laws of why we can't do this and what we can't accomplish. We're taught that every day. But when you break free from that way of thinking, like we're doing today, there are so many, 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 many exceptions to the laws or rules of the world. It's incredible. Our faith and experiences help us adjust our belief systems. It comes down to, it depends upon the way we choose to think of ourselves in a given moment. And when we have a new experience or witness something in another person that we once believed to be impossible, like Roger Bannister with a mile or whatever it may be, we're freed in our beliefs to change those limitations in our own lives. We choose when these experiences occur for us because we define what the experience means for us. That is what changes our lives and changes our thinking. Rewiring us to think in a better way into the next day and changing our lives into the next day. Rewiring your mind starts with a thought. Rewiring your life starts with a thought. And if you can believe you have the power to change your life, it's time to make it happen. And the best part about that is that every single one of you already started. <laughs> because the second you chose to come here, whenever it passed your desk or computer or phone or you saw it in here, put things in motion for your life. Let's act on them. That's why we're here. We're taking action on what we want to do in life. But I know that's a whole lot of information. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on that? The rewiring process. This is the next part we're going to do right there. But there was that straightforward. <laughs> it's something to take in, but it's something that you should take in because we have so much power in our lives to do incredible things. And the way the world tells us that you can't. I wouldn't be here if I believed that I can't. I wouldn't be here if people around me, like love and connection and all these needs, explain to me that the people are, I have support because people care about me and push this dream forward. We can do incredible things. And you can do incredible things in your, in your life if you choose to. But this next part, after addressing every human need and trying to tackle the question of why we do what we do, and addressing the thoughts that we think that may not be beneficial to us and diving into the rewiring process, I want you all to take a few minutes right now and think about this individually and write it down on the back of one of your sheets or whatever you got room. If you need more paper, I got more paper. Is there a pattern in your life that you want to change to get a new result? Is there a pattern that you can see now that isn't getting you to where you want to be and you want to change it? Take the time now to try and think about that. Think about the pattern that you may be following, that a shift could create a better result for you, whether that's a daily routine, a fitness goal, a health goal. It could be a relationship goal. We've addressed so much, a thought pattern goal, whatever it is, to create more joy in your life. Take the time now to try and figure that out. And try to figure out what the difference maker will be for you. What's the shift you can make to create that result that you're looking for? Take a couple minutes. One of my goals is to help people make the changes that they want to make. Coaching allows you to make a change that you want to make on your own terms. 
We want to figure out what drives the way we think, the way we feel, and our ability to make a decision. We want to find the distinctions in how we think or how we feel, which is what we've been doing today, for what we truly want. And once we figure that out, it creates clarity for you. And it brings you results. Because clarity will clear your path to success in your life. And everything that we're addressing today is creating clarity to why we do what we do. Take another minute or two on the pattern. If you only, if you only find one, so be it. If you don't find any, we're going to continue on it. But it's powerful. Part of this training, because we're going to all get involved here. I did this in the last couple of seminars, and it really seemed to spark a lot in people. Everyone in here is here for the same reason, to make a change, to learn something new. With identifying the patterns that we just tried to figure out, is there anyone in here that wants to tell us what your pattern is? Because this room has about 20 people or so in it. That's 20 people with life experiences, with skills of their own, with talents of their own, that could shed light onto your situation. So is there anyone that wants to share? Because the person next to you could hold your answer. All you got to do is step in a little bit to that anxiety of not wanting to share. <laughs> Does anybody want to? Yeah. Okay. Just negativity. Negativity. Okay. Okay. Where where's the negativity coming from? Just people you're around, like family and everything? Yeah. What type of like how are people angry or people betrayal. Betrayal? Okay. If you don't mind, how they how were you betrayed? Our sister betrayed. Gotcha. Okay. Well, how to stay positive in that is looking at the true gift that you have. Why you're hurt so much by the betrayal, in my opinion, is because at your core is love. At your core is light. So when someone tries to take that light away, betrays you, it does hurt. And it hurts on an even deeper level because at our core, it's love. We're given that. With you, how to overcome the negativity, overcome the thoughts of betrayal and everything, instead of looking at the betrayal, look at the light that you shine into people's lives. It's obvious. I keep looking at you in this training because you're shining light into this training. <laughs> you're the, like, you and then... Matt, <laughs> two, two people I'm looking at every, every couple of moments because like, I can look to you for, in a way, grounding. It's obvious you shine light into this. You shine light the second you walked in. I noticed it. Yeah, it's true. But when you can focus on the light that you shine rather than what someone else did, your life begins to get better. And like we said with the giving aspect of contribution, when you give to someone else, your life gets better. How you're betrayed, that's on your sister sadly, but don't let that darkness darken the light that you bring wherever you go. If love is at your core, start to walk in that love and just watch as that betrayal doesn't even affect you anymore. The negatives don't affect you anymore because you're walking in such a positive light. <laughs> yeah. See? You shine light. You're like, oh, I have that. <laughs> See? It's true, though. And I'm sorry to hear that that happened, but the tr the no, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The experience and trauma thing probably meant a lot then. But if you've survived betrayal, you've survived that trauma, the trauma stays in us, it's in our minds. But it also creates so much strength in you. You're still here, meaning you still have a gift to give. You still have something to accomplish in this world. And like that is your love, whether that's shining your love into a situation, whatever, whatever is truly at your core in your own belief. Just after talking to you for however long you've been here, it's apparent that you shine light into situations. It's apparent that love is at your core from my perspective. What that is for you, it could be that. It could be something different. But the people that have love at their core sadly tend to go through the big struggles and they mean more because love we care about people when we care about people we tend to get hurt a little bit more <laughs> that's like how my, why i do this is because the, the pain i've been through but if i can shift that pain to help people just like your love helps people and your light 
that proves that you're stronger than you know. And just like what we said with the rewiring process, we're told that we, we, we don't have this, this, we're told these rules and laws and limitations. We're told that we are, are, we're actually more than we imagine. So if you operate in that love, you operate where it's the, strug- the struggle isn't holding you down, but the strength is lifting you up of your love, your life drastically changes for the better. And that's a pattern that you shift every day. Rather than operating in a thought process where the betrayal is always at your forefront or the ill health is always at your forefront, what would happen if you shifted the thought on a daily basis? Just when it pops in your head, you shift it to, I'm getting better. You shift it to the person you just helped. You shift it to the strength that you have and not the struggle you went through. That's how we overcome trauma. Because trauma and experience, it's awful at times, no matter what it is. We all go through our own experiences and our traumas. But how you wire that into your mind and how you overcome it is what creates the strength moving forward in your life. And it's obvious you just have a lot of strength in you that is about to get operated on, <laughs> you know? It's, about, it's very true that you walk in strength. And once you realize, yeah. 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 Look at that. That's the light you brought into the world, you know? It's true. Like that moment, like I said, with that moment where you're holding on to your child for the first time, that love is so pure. And like I said, the love's at your core. Love is right next to you as well, <laughs> you know? That's your rock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're laughing. Yeah. Yeah. You got joy. I get that. You got, well, right now, you got a lot of joy right now in this moment. You know, you're with your daughter. You got a lot of joy. You're learning something new. I said, actually, it's, it's funny. I said it to someone at the last training, but we need to operate in joy. We need to enjoy our moments, E-N-J-O-Y, but we need to be in joy, I-N-J-O-Y. And when you can operate in joy, just in, in joy in this moment, that changes your life. That's where your love starts shining. That's where your love pours out, you know. If I quote anything, when your cup overflows, just like as we're told, you know. But when your love overflows, your life drastically changes, and your life will drastically change the second you start to, if one of those thoughts comes in, no, I'm going to walk the other way. I'm going to walk in my strength rather than the struggle that's holding me down. And when you break those chains, game over. <laughs> game over. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what else? Is anybody else before we move on to the next thing? Yeah. I just want to thank Jolene for bringing me on this first talk because that just answered, I mean, that took a lot of courage and that just answered something for me that I'm going through. So thank you. I'll I'll tell my dad he's good. (laughs) But no, it's true. And like, the example is right what we just heard where your struggle gave strength to someone else. The second you operate in that, everything that you've been through changes something for someone else. You know, like we said at the start, everything happens for a reason. We're here for a reason. When I was typing this up, I didn't know who was going to (laughs) help. All right. Yeah, of course. I'm glad you're here. Before we move on to the goal portion of this, does anybody else have anything that they want to bring up and receive help from me or someone else in here? I am so proud of you. I appreciate it. It means the world. Whole, whole front row is just love. <laughs> we got we got about a half hour left, so we can dedicate more time to the next section, which I think is going to help us move forward in everything that we just talked about in this, but the entire training. Because our next part, oh, definitely going to have to type it in. <laughs> Let's see what we got. If it loads. Play a quick intermission. <laughs> See what we got, yep. There we 
go. Okay. So, after addressing limiting patterns or how we meet our needs in an unproductive way or just touching on the importance of our thoughts and how powerful they are to us, to help us drive forward with where we've been, we need to know where we're going, a.k.a. a goal, a change that we want to make for ourselves. Everything that we've gone over so far leads us out of where we've been by identifying why we do what we do. But now to take that further, what do you want to do? That's your goals. Whether it's an emotional goal, a behavioral goal, a physical goal, a mental goal, or a spiritual goal, what are your goals that you're striving towards? In this day and age, goals are very underestimated in the power that they truly have. When you set a goal for yourself, you unearth something in yourself. And more importantly, goals have the power to break the limiting patterns we find ourselves in. Goals feed the flame in us. So to ignite that flame in all of you, we're going to do one last activity today. And when it comes to goals, this is called the pleasure and pain principle. Now, if you, do you guys, if you have rum on the back of your sheets, I think you guys have one more sheet we can run the back of. Um, to find that spark that each of us have, that gift that each of us have that makes us all individual and unique in our own way, whether that's love or whether that's something else, we need to unearth it by moving forward with what we want to pursue. So with this sheet, I want you all to write down three goals that you have, three things that you want to pursue or accomplish. They can be big goals, they can be small goals, something that will take you some amount of effort for you to accomplish. Take some time now and write that down. It's always someone that says that. <laughs> I haven't even got to the tough part yet. <laughs> So now that we have three goals, and if you don't have three, that's totally fine. If you have one, this will totally work for you. The next step in this, this pleasure and pain principle, I want you to write down three good things that will come from each of those goals that you have, three pleasures that you will feel from accomplishing that goal. Take the time to do that.
So what we're doing is we're creating the vision of what we can achieve or get from accomplishing a goal and it allows, it to feel, it allows us to feel that joy in this moment. Feel the joy of accomplishing it now. To feel success in this moment for setting that goal. But what it does is it ignites that spark in us to want to reach to the end of the goal. To feel it now and see it through to the finish to feel that success in this moment. And once you've connected three pleasures you will feel from accomplishing that goal, I want you all now to write three pains that may come from you not achieving that goal. Three reasons that you will, will make you say, I must get this done. I need to do this. Whether that's some sort of regrets or certain p- aspects of your life falling apart, whatever it may be for you, link it to the goal. Add it to the vision you have to make sure you accomplish it. And take some time to do that right now. in a minute. All right. The purpose of this activity is to help you all think individually about what you're pursuing and where you're headed, but to also help you get there. To feel the joy of achieving that goal now. To feel what it feels like to accomplish something now. Then understand what it will feel like to not achieve it. To light the fire in you to get to the finish. You're all here for a reason. Whether that's to reach a new level, to have a breakthrough, and with the tools that we've gone over today, You have the power to do it in the palm of your hands. Our goals allow us to envision the future, go there in our minds, to feel what it feels like to accomplish it, and then come back to the present, to the now, with the fire to make it happen. Your goals hold so much power. Now, we have about 20 minutes. Does anybody have any questions with all the activities that we've gone over? Or any patterns, or whatever it may be? Anything we stuck on that like you want a little bit more clarification on? We all have been given this life, and it is our choice to do with it what we want. That's the power that we have in us. The power to make a decision. The power to set a goal and take action on that goal. The power to take control of our minds instead of giving up and letting the world tell you how you're supposed to think. You have the power to live your life on your own terms. That's why I do life coaching. To help people see that and take hold of that. Believe it. 
Take action on it through the goals that you set for yourself. Because the more you believe you can do it, the more the way opens up for you. The more your mind and your brain adapts to that belief, that works both positively and negatively in your life. So truthfully, what would happen if you acted on the positive way? Would things get better for you? Would you gain control of this to direct it to where you want it to go? Would you live the life that you want to live? That's your choice. But today, we went over why we do what we do. We went over our limiting patterns that may be stopping us, whether that's a thought pattern or just something we're doing in our lives. And we address the importance of our thoughts and why we need to choose what we think on a daily basis. You learned how to break those limitations and those patterns in all areas and create new goals in the process to move forward. And now it comes down to every single one of you. You put the work in for the last two hours. You took a step for you and came out today for a specific reason. Now put the work in when you leave here and make it happen. Now up front on the back desk we have a sheet. We're going to have a sheet right there. I don't think it's out there right now. Where you can write your name and you can write your email. Where I can reach out to you. you can, we can go over life coaching stuff. If you want to become a life coaching client, I offer whether if you're in the area, phone call, in person, FaceTime even, many options to help you get to where you want to get to. And through those emails, I offer a free consultation session where we have about an hour or so to go over what it is you want to accomplish and how you want to move forward in your life. And then we can go over price pointing and whatever it may be and what works for you. But on the back, you'll have a sheet where you can write your name and your email on that. There's business cards up there if you want to take them, give them to your friends, or stay in contact in some way. Now, up here, there's a YouTube channel. Every single Sunday, once a week with Billy Janalutis on YouTube. It can be once a week with Billy. If you have a card, you know how to spell the last name. If you want to take a shot, you can take a shot. Once a week with Billy, it'll pop up on YouTube. And every single Sunday for the past three and a half years now, I've posted a video with a message in some way to help people. There's been guests on the show. We're trying to help people in specific ways. That could hold something for you. But go check it out. Do motivational speaking, life coaching, therapy, or mentoring, guys. And I thank every single one of you guys for coming out here today. If you want to write your name on a sheet or take a car in the back and reach out to me, I'm more than happy to talk with you. But thank you all. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>